20 years before Shoemaker-Levy 9 was destroyed in a collision with Jupiter. Another comet nearly suffered the same fate when it narrowly escaped a close encounter with the giant planet. Its orbit permanently altered, Comet Vilt 2 is now the destination of a mission called Stardust. Currently in development through a partnership between NASA, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Lockheed Martin Astronautics, and the University of Washington. Developed by Lockheed Martin Astronautics, the Stardust spacecraft, weighing 770 pounds or 350 kilograms, is scheduled to blast off from Cape Canaveral aboard a Delta II rocket in February of 1999. As part of NASA's new discovery program, this small spacecraft will be sent on an historic mission to rendezvous with Comet Vilt 2 and return the first comet samples ever collected. As the rocket ascends skyward, it will eject all four of the solid rocket boosters used for assistance during launch. The Delta II is composed of three stages, called a stack, which fire in tandem. The Stardust spacecraft is perched on top of the stack inside protective fairings. Once a stage has finished its burn, it is jettisoned to reduce weight. When the rocket has left the atmosphere, the fairings enclosing Stardust will be jettisoned. Thrusters on the second stage will spin the spacecraft and third stage to maintain stability during separation and the third stage burn. Shortly after separation, thrusters on Stardust will stabilize it as it begins its long journey. As Stardust departs from Earth, it will unfold its solar array. Once its solar panels are fully extended, small thrusters will rotate Stardust into position for collecting solar energy. In order to avoid carrying excessive amounts of fuel, Stardust will embark on a seven-year journey which uses the gravitational pull of the Earth to slingshot toward the comet. The trajectory of Stardust has been designed so that the encounter will occur with a velocity that is low enough that the tiny particles from the comet don't damage or destroy the spacecraft. After 2 billion miles, or 3.2 billion kilometers, and two orbits about the Sun, Stardust will intercept Vilt 2 in January of 2004. Approximately two years later, Stardust will eject a capsule, which will carry the intriguing samples of interstellar and comet dust back to Earth. With it, Stardust will carry four important instruments, the Aerogel Collector Grid, the Comet and Interstellar Dust Analyzer, the Whipple Shield Dust Flux Monitor, and a navigation camera. Several times during the journey to intercept Comet Vilt 2, Stardust will use side A of the double-sided Aerogel Collector Grid to retrieve samples of interstellar dust. Aerogel's unique composition gives it the ability to capture high-speed dust particles while minimizing the destructive effect of their impact. Consisting of ice, rock, and an array of chemicals, Vilt 2 now orbits the inner solar system. As it nears the sun, the comet heats up and gases boil off the nucleus, creating a vast atmosphere, or coma, which fluoresces in sunlight. Stardust will pass through the coma of comet Vilt 2 at 13,000 miles per hour, or 21,000 kilometers per hour, at a distance of 80 to 250 miles, or 130 to 400 kilometers from the nucleus. The Whipple shields, stacks of five carbon filament sheets and ceramic cloths, will protect the spacecraft from impact with comet debris, traveling six times faster than a speeding bullet. 
As Comet Vilt 2 whizzes by Stardust, the Aero Gel Collector Grid will once again be deployed, this time collecting samples from the Comet. Because the Comet overtakes Stardust from behind, the samples will be kept separate from the interstellar dust particles by being collected on side B of the Collector Grid. Stardust carries with it a camera similar to that used on the Voyager spacecraft. Passing on the sunny side of the comet, the camera will pan to follow the comet and is expected to return spectacular photos of Vilt 2's nucleus. Shortly after its rendezvous with comet Vilt 2, Stardust will adjust its orientation and begin transmitting valuable data back to Earth. The Deep Space Network, a collection of radio antennas positioned strategically around the world, will receive the faint signals from Stardust and then relay the information to the mission controllers. In January of 2006, seven years and three billion miles, or five billion kilometers, after it was launched, Stardust will return its samples to Earth. Four hours before its scheduled touchdown in Utah, the sample return capsule will spin up as it is jettisoned from the Stardust spacecraft. Pulled by gravity, the sample return capsule will plunge into Earth's atmosphere traveling at 28,000 miles per hour, or 45,000 kilometers per hour. The samples will be protected by a carbon-based heat shield, which will use drag to slow the capsule as it descends. Approximately 20 miles, or 32 kilometers above sea level, a drogue chute will be released, which will further slow the capsule. Approximately six minutes later, the main chute will be deployed to allow for a safe landing. Once the capsule has been safely returned, the Stardust scientists will use the finest instruments and labs to study and learn from a unique sample of materials that represent the essence of our solar system.